Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, October 31, 2022. Happy Halloween. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Let's start with Friday's rally right into the 100 period moving average. And let me mention why that's significant, or at least what happened that's significant on Friday. And then we'll go into today, this week, what to expect. We have a little bit of a kabuki theater situation going on this week. There's a lot of stuff going on. Last week, the market runs up into the close, closing price 389.02. This is an hourly chart that includes the aftermarket and pre market activity. So what we'll do is focus our attention right up here after the market closed at 4 p.m. on Friday for the next 15 minutes or so, they run up to just over 390. Now, stay with me. There's a method to the madness why I'm bringing this up. Back to the regular daily chart. What we have around that price is unfinished business. In this case, An unfinished business can vary depending on what it is, where it is on the chart. In this particular case, the unfinished business is an unfilled gap. Said gap is at 390.12. You see the horizontal line running across the screen that is unfilled. It is unfinished business. Back to the hourly chart with the aftermarket activity. They did fill the gap after the closing bell on Friday. So let's talk about that for a moment. Is that good enough? Does it count for completing the unfinished business or filling the gap? And the answer is, no, it doesn't. It counts during the regular business hours. But how do we read what happened on Friday? We call it the thieves in the aftermarket or the aftermarket thieves. You say tomato, I say tomato. Fair enough. So this morning... The market opens up slightly down in what we call in the trading parlance a pullback formation. When you look at the big picture, what happened today? Nothing happened today. They traded in about a 30-point range on the ES or the SPX 30 S&P handles. In the big scheme of things, in light of the current ranges that we've been having, it's a very narrow ranging day, complete inside day to Friday. So think about this for a few moments. What do we have going forward? What do we have on the board? The market can trade sideways for a couple of days, pull back, sideways to pull back, any combination thereof, as long as they stay, for one, inside the low of the last breakup candle in the sequence. The last breakup candle was created on Friday. The low is all the way down at 379.68. As long as they stay above 379.68 on daily closes, they're still in a position for another run higher, another leg higher. A, to complete the unfinished business, and B, to complete a target that I have for the SPY, and we haven't hit it yet, and hint, it's not the unfinished business, it's higher. But wait, there's more. We have Kabuki Theater on tap, this week. They start meeting, they meaning the Federal Open Market Committee, the Fed governors. They start meeting on Tuesday. They meet through Wednesday afternoon. They come up with a FOMC interest rate announcement. The market is basically expecting another three quarters of a point increase in the Fed funds rate. But what the market has also been pricing in over the last couple of weeks or so is what we call the Fed pivot. Now, we don't know whether it's going to be a Fed fake pivot, a Fed real pivot, a media-induced pivot. Whatever it is, here's the situation. If the market is expecting the Fed to pivot, then it's already baked in. They can have some more upside, and if they do, they'll likely get to the target, which is at minimum of 393, but they can certainly go higher. 400 is a big fat round number, And if they get above 395, they're going to start getting pulled in to 400. Anything goes around the FOMC announcement on Wednesday afternoon. 
We don't know whether they're going to spike them up. We don't know whether they'll spike them down. The market is certainly looking for a further excuse for another leg higher. If the marketplace begins to believe that the Fed is going to decrease the rate at which they're increasing interest rates, the market will take that as positive news. They'll call it a pivot. It will be buried in the statement that the Fed makes or the press conference that Jerome Powell makes after the FOMC announcement. We'll talk more about that tomorrow night as we get closer to the Kabuki Theater slash FOMC announcement. Let's talk about both sides of the tape. One side is, the bear side is, first, if they start getting below the low of the last breakup candle in the sequence, 389.68, that's going to open the door for some lower stuff. What's the lower stuff? Well, you'll be familiar with one of the areas. This was the last breakout area in the sequence. You'll remember it from last week, 375, 374. Remember what happened. We had another situation where the aftermarket thieves did the thing. I think that was linked to the Amazon earnings announcement. You might want to put this one on a sticky note. Before they start getting to the low of that breakup candle, if they start getting below 383, That's going to be like a flare-up in the air for the bear case to really become more of an awareness, closer to a reality that it may be happening. If they get below 383, it's almost a laydown that they would be testing that breakup candle low around 379, give or take. Put that on a sticky note. The medium-term case slash going sideways case is They can't get above Friday's high. They run sideways in between, let's say, 383 and Friday's high, and then they're eating time off the clock, building energy for the next leg higher if they don't get below Friday's breakup candle low. You see how that all works? That's the bull case. That's the bear case. That's also the eating time off the clock case in between. I like to take a look at other charts, look around the horn. Do we see anything different? Do we see something confirming something on a larger time frame when we step down a notch, for example, to the 240 chart? Nothing's really going on here. The market is stair-stepping its way higher, and they're in the midst of a pullback operation. So we went up, we pull back. They go up, they pull back. They have another rally up and they're in the midst of a pullback. It's really just a continuation of the same thing they've been doing. It never appears that way during the pullback operation to most traders, most people. They want to believe the top is in and the next leg down is underway. It may be, but it's unlikely that we see that before Kabuki Theater. It's possible after Kabuki Theater for sure. What if we split it again and go down to a 120-minute chart? You see the same stair-step formation. You see the same pullback to sideways formation above all the moving averages. So from a short-term basis, using a two-hour chart, this is essentially a bullish chart until proven otherwise. Let's check out inside the numbers, see what we had on the docket today, See if we had the numbers intact, even though the market didn't get very far in either direction. Was there something of value that was posted on the board that could have, A, produced a profitable trade, multiple profitable trades? Let's go find out. Happy Monday. After a big-time finish last week, now Mrs. Market will have to contend with Kabuki Theater, a.k.a. FOMC, and the interest rate slash inflation nation saga. Do we start the week waiting on the Fed? You see where my mindset was at zero dark 30. Let's get into the numbers. Pullbacks are normal garden variety, especially after a big up day two or three. Opening below Friday's close opens the door for said pullback to run some tests all the way down to 384.60, give or take. Now, they didn't do that today, doesn't mean they can't do that tomorrow. Put that on a sticky note 
if they're equally weak tomorrow morning as they were today, we're going to expect a visit down to 384.60. It's sticky note material. Now at zero dark 30, that had the makings of an early pivot. You don't know whether they will or they won't get there, but we can have multiple pivots during the day and you'll see that unfold a little bit later. The trick for the bulls is to keep price above. Well, they did maintain price above. They never did visit that particular number or pivot. Getting below opened the door for lower stuff. We didn't have to worry about that. The bull case is getting above 389, which opens the door for some unfinished business and a spike of 390. We talked about that before. The thieves showed up in the after hour session Friday to do the deal up there. Let's move along, see what we have as the day gets underway. Here's what we've got in the early going. 386.25 can be support. Staying above keeps the door open for 389. Below opens the door for 385.25. And then we have the lower stuff. So let's focus on three things, and then we're going to go to a chart. 386 and a quarter, 389, and 385 and a quarter. It's a five-minute SPY chart. Right of the vertical is today's activity. The top line is 389. They didn't get there. They made an attempt, but they didn't make it. The second line or middle line is 386 and a quarter. And you can see that that essentially became and was the pivot all day long. Here, they did it all day. They did it in the morning. They did it midday. And they did it in the afternoon. They kept revisiting and running tests of that pivot. Now the lower number is 385.25, low of day 385.26. Pretty slick stuff at zero dark 30, or at least before the opening bell even rings. I'm going to point out a couple of other things. Pause the video, read the notes, and go back to the chart, double check the work. 925. Traders looking for a scalp with potential can consider 386.25, give or take. The risk is heading lower, meaning we're buying it for a scalp, bounce back in the other direction. The risk is heading lower towards the 385, 385 and a quarter, yada, yada. Let's move along a little bit. The opening bell rings. First five minute candle, you see what's going on here. The low is 386.14. The high happens to be 387.47. Doesn't look like much on the chart, but when you look closer, it's a 12-handle bounce, give or take. Let's move along, see what else we have. 935, 387.15 to 387.50, give or take is magnetic and overhead resistance from a short-term perspective. 387.15 to 387.50, about right in between. The high in this candle, 387.47 against 387.15 to 387.50. How you doing? We're moving along. Pause the video. Read the notes. Go back to the chart to double check the work. You saw the narrow range. So you know we had the numbers because you saw them early in the morning. And the market basically traded around these numbers all day long. So pause it. Read them. There's stuff in here you can learn from each and every day. It pays to know your numbers. Stocks on the move. Quiet morning today. We had four potentials. USO came close. That's the proxy, pseudo proxy for crude oil. HWM and FLNG did not. They're off the board, no trades. We'll take a look at on semiconductor that did come into its entry target. Before we get to crude, here's a chart of UNG natural gas. Swing traders, lazy swing trader, were long UNG, not from today, before today. Traders, long natural gas must always, or short natural gas, must always remember one thing. Natural gas is the widow maker. What does that mean? It means it's so volatile that there have been traders whose careers and lives have ended as a result of natural gas. Net, net, it's volatile. USO, here's a daily chart. Here's an hourly chart. They missed the number 70.50 this morning or this afternoon. They came down, made a low of 70.72 and bounced away. Not really a good reason to bring this one up, 
just populated the chart. On Semiconductor was a bit of a rodeo today. You can't see it on the five minute chart, but they did the deal. They did the minimum required base hit at the first price. Here's a one minute chart where you see the bounce and Jordan got that profit in the room. Then you see what happened. They came lower 6384 against 6380 and had a nice rip away also coming too close to the second number, taking it off the table. But yet the third number, interestingly enough, worked. The low was 62.94 against 62.95. Back on a five-minute chart, here was that 62.94. How do you do that by one penny? And then you have a nice little rip away from it, and they give you the deal at the third price. Whether you took it or not, trader's choice, the numbers work. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, let's take notice, once again, relative strength. My favorite market leading indicator. It was not up by a lot, but certainly a divergence from what the S&P did today. That's sticky note material. That's puzzle piece material. We saw that theme play over and over last week. The same theme is continuing. We saw it intraday last week. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Remember, we do have the Kabuki Theater FOMC situation, but we also have on the 8th of this month, or next month, November, we have the election. And remember what we said for the last couple of weeks. Can they rally the market and hold the market up into the election? Whether they can or they can't, we don't know for sure, but it's certainly an awareness And certainly as time goes on and the market continues to grind higher minus today, that becomes more of a reality type of situation. 185 is overhead resistance in the IWM. Getting above 185, closing candles above 185, certainly from an intraday perspective and then daily begins to open the door for the gap all the way up here. They'll have to clear the high of that candle which is slightly higher, just short of 186. But 185 is very important. And if they start pushing above, it's going to begin to open the door for the gap. And that gap is north of 188 and a half. What's going on with the folks down at the transportation department? They're hovering above the 100 period moving average, day number two above. This is what they're actually doing. They're trying to work their way into the breakdown candle. Why? Because if they do, they'll start climbing their way toward the top of the breakdown candle. Roughly around 14,100, give or take. 14,000 is a big fat round number. So if they start pushing into that candle, the magnetic force of 14,000, in addition to the fact that they like to run tests of the highs of those breakdown candles, that will draw price in. It will become one of those magnetic situations. The Q people, pullback operation, inside day to Friday's big up day, same routine we discussed in the SPY. They can run sideways for a couple of days leading into the Kabuki Theater announcement. If they pull back, we have to watch Friday's low. If they try and rally, they're going to get into the moving average, first the 50-period moving average, and then they're going to want to work on the 100-period moving average if this is the same thing we discussed in the SPY. You go up, you pull back. It's a stair-step routine, up and back, up. And if this is another pullback, we'll see as long as they stay above the low of Friday's breakup candle, period. The financials, nothing new to report, same routine, inside day to Friday. There's nothing negative, really, on this chart unless they get below Friday's low. Smash Mouth, same routine. This chart just looks different than some of the rest. We've got the channel. It's a bearish wedge. They may work their way up the bearish wedge channel, inside the channel. But once and whenever if they break down below that channel, that's going to be selling galore. That will first open the door to retest the lows. And once and if they break the lows, that opens up a whole different can of worms. The semiconductor space is a good proxy for the tech space. If the semis are gonna go down, it's gonna drag down the tech space. If the tech space goes down, it's gonna drag down everything else. Believe me, 
It's an all the same market scenario. You're not going to find the S&P going up 2% on a day when the NASDAQ's going down 2%. We're not in a tape like that. I don't ever remember a tape like that. They're either buying them or selling them with minor exception on individual issues, individual stocks. It's an all the same market situation. This is the monthly chart of Smash Mouth. So we just closed the month right now. And here we are. We've tested and closed above the 50 period moving average, put in a sign or signal of a trend change. This is stuff right out of the course, lazy e-mini trader. As you know, time is more important than price, and this just may not be on time. It could be, but it's kind of like on time mini. It's not one of my favorite on time situations when I look at this chart. But let's look at the bigger picture still. What did they do? They did test the 50 period moving average on the monthly chart. They did put in a sign or signal of a trend change. They did run a test of a break up candle low on the monthly chart. The monthly chart is one of those situations where nobody wants them. A case could be made that this is a buying opportunity. It's a buying opportunity, technically speaking, as long as they stay above the low of the monthly chart break up candle low. And here's the trick. They have all month to get back below, meaning all of November. They have an entire month to get below or rally. So it's an interesting situation. You go down to the weekly chart and you say, well, how do we know that they're actually going to play out the bull case off that low? What if that is a pretty good low? We have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. Well, they're going to start getting above some stuff. And the daily chart's not going to look like one of those bearish wedges channel things anymore. They're going to break out to the upside if that's the case. We can use the weekly 20 period moving average as a gauge. We can use 210. If they get above and start closing candles above first daily and then weekly above 210, then there's likely another leg higher. And that next leg higher could be up to two and a quarter or even higher We don't want to get ahead of our skis here, but we're just doing the assessment. I'm giving a little bit of a lesson using longer term charts, end of the month close. I like to pick stuff out that we don't talk about each and every day. You want to get multiple flavors of education. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.